So today has definitely been the hardest day. Uh, you've got gas, not sleeping, we're not sleeping. Um, definitely not an easy day. At night, she woke me up every hour to get fed. So yeah, we're tired. This is the real face. No makeup, no hair, no shower. This is the real us. Yeah. And this is you, so sweet. Just let us sleep. <laughs> let us sleep, please. <laughs> let us sleep. <laughs> so it's been a month now and, well, I've been drinking wine to get through a fair bit, cheap wine. Um, but how is breastfeeding going? It's been pretty amazing, I have to say. Since day one, Alma lapsed right away. And then, actually, I think it's been so good because Amrit, our lactation consultant, uh, she really taught me how to breastfeed because I thought I was doing it right, but then I realized I wasn't doing it so right. And so on day three, when she was born, she told me like, no, this is the way you breastfeed correctly. And since I did it, no pain, never got irritated. Like, it feels good, actually. And I think it's beautiful because you have this connection with your baby all the time. Like, I think I'm going to breastfeed her forever, huh? Until she's 26? <laughs> Until she's 26. Uh-huh. Weirdo. <laughs> Weirdo. No, but it's so beautiful because you have this bond with your baby. I'm not going to breastfeed until she's 26, but <laughs> until she decides not to breastfeed no more. Alma de mi corazón. A month ago, you arrived into our lives. And what a ride it's been so far. We have had sleepless nights, plenty of laughter, and cried tears of joy because of you. In this sometimes difficult postpartum period, your presence has been such a blessing. Your father and I are so in love with you that at times, we have almost forgotten about the world pandemic right outside our door. Now to another grim milestone, the world surpassing one million deaths from the coronavirus. The US leads the global death toll with more than 200,000. Brazil, India, Mexico, and the UK follow. President Trump has tweeted saying that he and the First Lady have tested positive for COVID-19. It's happened, and, and Donald Trump, has, as I say, has, has downplayed his own vulnerability. He very rarely wears a mask himself, as, as we know. He carries one. He showed it on the debate stage, but he very rarely wears that mask. And he's continued to hold those rallies, and that one in Minnesota this week is an example. Thousands of people packed together in those rallies. Major, from what you know, what exactly were the protocols in the White House for dealing with the coronavirus? Anthony, they weren't protocols. They were preferences. And the preference was not to social distance, not to wear masks. And that's the problem. That is the quite visible problem for this White House right now. And those kinds of things send not only an internal message to what West Wing staff, but they send a message to the country. The only thing I can do is repeat what I repeat maybe 20, 30 times a day, that in order to avoid the acquisition and transmission of this virus, which is highly transmissible, you should have uniform wearing of masks. You should have physical distancing. You should avoid crowds. You should try and do things outdoors much more than indoors. And you should frequently wash your hands. And to me, that goes for any situation without exception. Donald Trump, confident he's a COVID super survivor, came roaring back to the campaign. After 10 days confined to the White House, Trump says he's no longer infectious and claims he may be immune for life, an unproven assertion according to many doctors. Now they say I'm immune, I can feel, I feel so powerful, I'll walk into that audience. I'll walk in there, I'll kiss everyone in that audience. Welcome to my new reality. What you doing? I am working. I am doing the Spanish subtitles for, for Alma, Para Mi Gente Latina, while breastfeeding. I have everything I need. I got the computer, the desk, the phone, the baby, baby wipes, very important, and the cat. Yeah, welcome to my office. Come on in. <laughs> so this is Alma's closet, and I just opened it up, and Look who's here. Wavi, this is not your closet. 
get out. He's been very jealous of Alma since her arrival. He, feel dis he feels displaced. Uh, the other cat, Spartacus, has become a protector. But this guy, he he's jealous. He's going through a jealousy phase of his life. Get out of here. Get out of here. Alma, Alma. This is your nana. This is one of your nanas, Alma. Yes, it is. <laughs> she's, she's watching you. She's watching you, yes. <laughs> You're a good girl. Your mummy and daddy's a good girl, Alma. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. I've seen you smile. Oh, I've seen she's, you smile. I think she's trying to. I think she's trying to do a poo poo. Is that what she's trying? <laughs> that's the that's the poo poo face. That's the poo poo face. I have to tell you, she's she's such a happy kid. She smiles all the time. All the time. Like she's just an easy kid. Like maybe because we're here, and if she cries, we're here to pick her up immediately. Like the, there isn't crying fits because we're here. The comforter at all times, you know. We've had a good experience, but that's because there's been two of us tag teaming. And, but that's how it should be. You know, we should set families up for success. So, yeah. you know, I think a lot of like governments should actually step in and provide paid maternity leave and paid paternity leave. Um, and yeah, help families establish themselves. And like I said, form those really important connections and let women heal from birth. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. There's a huge connection between birth and postpartum. I think there's this big um, sort of dis normally there's this big disconnect between what happens in birth and what happens after the changes that actually happen in our brains. So you, w what happens in terms of hormones is the big biggest single hormonal shift that any of us will ever have in our entire lives happens in postpartum. And the way our brains actually change. So the female brain and, and the male brain, uh, but particularly the female brain, it's, it's one of those moments in our lives where our brain actually has the opportunity to rewire ourselves. So you can actually look at postpartum as this chance to like reprogram yourself and think, okay, you know, what was missing from my life before and how do I want to change? And you can actually make those changes in, in postpartum. And because your brain is changing so much, those changes can actually become a part of your permanent character. Yeah, mm. that's great. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But like I said, I think because society doesn't value that time, women don't value that time. And like I said, they don't look at it as an opportunity. They look at it as something that they have to like, Get through, or, uh, Get or through. something even dreadful, you know that. Yeah, yeah like a time yeah. that you just want to skip it. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah, should be totally the opposite. Yeah, yeah. And we're lucky that we are in a pandemic, and none of us have to work, and we have the means, you know, to provide because it's just like it's just so beautiful to give, you know, twenty four seven to this little human being. And I can and I can tell that it really affects her personality already. You know, like she's not anxious, she's not upset, she's she's a very calm. Like even in this week, which has been a little bit tougher that she's always smiling like she, she feels our energy and she's like oh okay i'm pa safe pa walks into the room and she hears a voice and the, the kid smiles all the time it's like it's a, it's, it's a, <laughs> she gets some ple she see the pleasure thing go on on her head of she can hear mum talking and she just starts smiling it's so beautiful it's a very beautiful thing to see you know smile <laughs> <laughs> Te gusta el masaje? El masajito. El masajito. Today is our wedding anniversary, our fourth year anniversary, and we decided to come to the park to have a little picnic with Alma, and she's loving it because she's an earth sign. Four years and counting. You're very special. You're gonna be the one that changes the whole world for better. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, but you are gonna fix this crazy world. The virus is spreading again, and you know, winter's gonna be a new challenge. You know, we're not overly concerned about 
COVID as we were, but we certainly don't feel that we need to be sick this winter, yeah. uh, including any form of sickness. So we're sort of just going to keep our heads yeah. down. We're still isolating, but we have done a couple of picnics. We have gone to the flea market. We dined at a restaurant. Always following the social distance norms and wearing a mask when yeah. we have to wear and like being outside. And in general, everyone is, is much more loose. People yeah. not doing the standards of what they were doing months ago like we were saying it's crazy as coronavirus virus gets worse people are getting more loose like even in restaurants you know like everywhere and like people are just are tired of waiting for so long so we'll see what's gonna happen no yep our goal this year is to get to christmas uh see the family get to all the family pal's mum and yeah. stepdad are coming, Paloma's coming. So our goal is to just get to Christmas, be healthy, all of us be happy. <laughs> yeah, the family's coming together slowly, slowly. My sweet little girl, in this little amount of time, you have already taught us so much. You have pushed us out of our comfort zone and made us realize how great we are as partners and how well we work as a team. You have changed our daily routine tested our weaknesses and highlighted our strengths but the greatest gift you have given us so far is that you have shown us how much we're able to love and sacrifice for you and for each other i am so grateful for our new little family i have married my soulmate and birthed the girl of my dreams what else could i ask for <laughs> <laughs>